So now we're going to do the, the classification. We're going to click on this classification wizard button up here. So this has been marked. We've got imagery there. Click on the classification wizard and we get this come up. We have several settings uh, here that we need. We are not going to do supervised. We're going to do unsupervised. Supervised would be uh, where we go into the image first of all and define areas that are typical of the things that we are looking for. This looks like coniferous forest. This looks like coniferous forest in shade. This looks like coniferous forest that's really dry. This look so we would need lots of classes like that. Uh, we'd need to find them in the image first and then perform our classification. Um, that's, that's one way of doing it, and that is, is a very common way of doing it. Another one is our unsupervised, where we say to the computer, here's an image, find stuff. Uh, and it will find stuff, uh, but then we need to find out what it's found out. We need to find out what those things actually are. So to begin with, it's a lot easier. Uh, we just tell the computer to, to, to do its thing, and it, and it will do a statistical analysis of the data. It will look at this uh, band space and find these different clusters of pixels that are similar and find these spectral classes. Then afterwards, we need to go around and say, well, that class, that looks like that looks like open grassland. That looks like coniferous forest. That looks like coniferous forest. That looks like coniferous forest. When we do this reclassification of the spectral classes into information classes. So at some point, we're going to have to interact with the image and tell the computer what things are. Um, but with the unsupervised method, we do it afterwards. Uh, and this is quite handy um, when we we're not entirely certain what's there in the image. Uh, and we don't know if we can actually define all the necessary classes uh, a priori before we get going. So this is uh, quite useful. Uh, unsupervised is definitely a good method for an initial uh, survey of an area. Uh, the classification type here says object-based, but we're going to change that to pixel-based, which is the, the, the starting point for all of these, actually. The object-based will then uh, would have taken a pixel-based analysis and then just also taken into consideration the spatial neighbors of those pixels. The, what we're doing now, the, the initial study, the initial analysis is going to be in this band space. And then with, the, with, with, this, uh, with this other method here, this object-based uh, method, it will then try and identify areas of similar pixels. Rather than just look in the pixels themselves, it would try to find spatial clusters of them as well and uh, doing a bit of extra grouping like that. We'll wait with that uh, until another course. Uh, that's a bit more advanced, um, but for, and for now we'll just stick to this. The classification schema, that's our ontology. Um, we haven't programmed anyone in um, and we don't have anything to, to work with, so let's just use a default. And this one is based on uh, conditions in North America, but it's good enough for us for now. We can expand that it work with it. Um, what this is saying is these things exist in our world. Coniferous forest, water, uh, grassland, that sort of thing. These are the things that exist in our world. Uh, so we can later on classify the image. We can go from our, uh, from our spectral classes to uh, information classes with the help of this. We're not bound to this strictly. We can make adjustments. This is just a good place to start. We'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, we're going to save the data to our database. Yep. And, uh, that we don't need to worry with. We'll just click on next now. Click on next. So we're going to use the ISO cluster. We can't do anything else. That's all there is. Uh, you click here. There is only ISO cluster. Maximum number of classes. So the maximum number, you know, what, what do you set the maximum number to be? Uh, how do you work this out? Well, rule of thumb is what you think there is in the image times three. Um, we're going to set it to 30. Um, the, 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 the times three is just kind of uh, guard against um, lighting differences and, and humidity differences and what have you in your image. But you're looking for things like, well, we've got urban, we've got fields, we've got bogs, we've got water. We've got a number of classes in this image that we're interested in, uh, and then there are slight variations on those. So the, 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 the multiplying that by three, it's just a rule of thumb that generally speaking works. Um, but we'll set this to 30 for now, uh, for this exercise. Um, the number of iterations, how many times is the computer going to look for these clusters? Because the way the, the, the clustering works is it tries to identify, it just throws out some um, 
starting points. So here are 30 starting points for my analysis, 30 locations within this multi-dimensional band space. And then says, right, um, these pixels over here are closest to that uh, starting point, so they'll belong together. And those pixels over there, they belong to that starting point. And then it then calculates an, an average value for those and then moves that uh, that, that uh, class center to the middle of those pixels and then redoes the analysis reassigns each pixel to a new class center uh, because it's now been moved slightly and it does that over and over again it iterates uh, over this process several times 20 times in this case we can change that if we want it should stabilize eventually the pixels will stop changing classes and settle on a, on a particular class that they belong to uh, and there are also other settings for this as well we're not going to worry too much about those. So set the number of classes to 30, leave everything else pretty much as, as standard, and then click on Run. This doesn't take terribly long on modern computers. And then we get up this nice colorful image, uh, which is the, the class, uh, the, these are the classes. Um, so it's managed to find from zero to 28 classes. So that's 29 classes, uh, nothing missing there. Yep, so we've got all of those classes. Uh, press the L to toggle transparency. So if we press the L key, we can see what's what there. Uh, so that red would appear to be water. Good. That green would also appear to be water. Uh, right. The colors you get up, I mean, th th this is uh, basically random. Uh, they're just randomly assigned. So don't worry if your colors don't match mine. Uh, but what do we do now? Uh, we click on next. Uh, and then it says output classified data set. Right, use a class of classifier for from. We don't have anything there. Let's just click on run. And we end up with eventually, you know, it's just done another image. And it's the same thing, just with different colors. You wonder what's going on. Uh, and we click on L, doesn't do anything this time. We can click on next because there's not much else happening here. And click on next. Ah, so what was all that about? We've now got three of these things. There's that first one, there's that one, and then there's a, what is going on? Well, um, that's a good question. Um, what is going on is uh, for S3 to decide. I really can't tell you why it needs to do this three times, but it does. It's the same classification. Uh, let's just go with it. You keep these in the project, uh, keep them there in the background, in the project. Uh, don't get rid of them, otherwise it, it, it throws a hissy fit. Um, things won't work. Um, so let's just keep these all three in there. You can turn those off um, and just keep that one there, uh, which would be quite handy. Uh, but now we need to start um, reclassifying. We need to do our reclassification of, of the image. We've got this far. We've got our classification scheme here. It's telling us that there are these things in the image. This we can adjust, we can add things to it. We can, if we want, we can take things away. And here are the classes, the same ones as over there. And we're going to do a reclassification of this. I think I'll stop the video here and then we can begin uh, doing the reclassification, the actual reclassification from spectral classes into information classes in the next video.